Hi guys, it is my pleasure to introduce Samia Kalidis. Uh, mm. You may know her as a ninja warrior athlete, fitness coach, and co-founder of Be A Warrior, the region's first obstacle training and ninja warrior training program for women. What you may not have known is that Samia is a designer and creative, creative director with a passion for social and community impact. She has helped partners bring their ideas and products to life through brand strategy, uh, product and experience design for the past 10 years. Samia, thank you so much for taking your time to teach us today. Thank you for having me. It's so great to be here. And thank you, um, Anya and Natalia for coming. <laughs> <laughs> So exciting. Okay, I'm going to turn myself off so you can just get straight into it. Sounds good. All right. I'm super excited to um, be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and I'm just going to basically talk through um, my experience in terms of building a brand, building a product from purpose to product, from just having a simple, inspiring idea that you're excited about, how to even begin um, to create a brand around it and what a brand means and all that kind of stuff. All right, so um, if you guys have any questions, please just type them in the, in the Q&A. There's a Q&A section um, and I will be answering them. Um, Jesse, if I miss any, just let me know, <laughs> but I um, have it up here. Um, but yeah, let's get started. <laughs> I miss you as well. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. So just let me know if you can see it. I think you can. All right. So I just want to start um, by asking a question. What is a brand? Um, if you guys can actually type in the chat, I would love to hear um, and see your responses. What, what is a brand? There's no right and wrong answer. I just want to kind of see, you know, um, get your thoughts, get some, some words out there. All right, any responses? What is a brand? All right, I'm gonna share um, a definition. So basically, um, a brand is a million things, okay? Um, but fundamentally, a brand is what they say about you when you leave the room. That was said by Amazon CEO, Jeff Bezos. Basically, a brand is the total sum of all rational, emotional perceptions of a product, service, or company that are created through consistent experience and communication. So literally what customers think of you, how they speak about you, how they feel, how they experience your product, all of that is your brand. Um, basically, a brand, a successful brand, what it conveys is a powerful promise. So it starts with a promise and shows you what you can expect and the experience that comes with your offer or product. Um, what we do is that we're, we'll start talking about the discovery, how to develop and create your brand strategy. I'm gonna help walk you through those. And once you have the strategy set, how you can bring um, your brand to life and your strategy to life in terms of design, communications, that means the name, the identity, the logo, the visual communications, um, all the way up to marketing. Um, and then we'll think broader. So we'll take it a bit further as well. We'll step a little bit further out. How do we bring that brand to life in terms of experience, in terms of your customer journey, how people interact with it on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, um, and how we tie that all together. So how do you launch and bring the brand to the marketplace, getting employees and customers excited? So I'll start with a case study that I worked on. Um, the assignment was to imagine a more affordable, a more fun, a creative way of um, bringing experiences and events to life. So brands, we, we had this um, company uh, come up to us um, and speak about 
basically things they were struggling with um, in terms of helping small businesses and startups be able to afford and have a platform in which they can communicate to their customers. That is not necessarily a physical shop. Um, the idea was to imagine a more affordable, fun, and creative experience for small local companies um, to be able to be more visible and accessible to their customers. So we helped with everything from the naming to the strategy to the final product and experience. We'll talk through the brand strategy and positioning, um, and hopefully you'll be able to take this process as a way to think about it and how to think about your own brand from there. Okay, so first thing, um, I always get a lot of questions. Um, like, hey, can you create a quick logo for me? I have an idea, I'm starting a company and I just want, um, I know that presentation is not there. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna turn it on and off just so you're not just looking at text and a blank screen. I figured it would, might, might be nicer to look at um, facial expressions and stuff like that and then I'll turn it back on. But thank you, Natalia. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna turn it on very, very soon. So basically, um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, can you create a quick logo for me? I have this idea, I think this would be cool. Um, that's always a red flag. <laughs> Why is that a red flag? Um, because you're coming at thinking, a brand from, thinking about a brand from just something visual from the beginning without even creating a strategy or a visual strategy with a designer to think about your ecosystem first, all right? Like what it even means. Um, I want it to be orange. I like this animal. I kind of want it to look like this. I like this style. Try not to go directly into a specific style um, or thinking that this is what I want it to look like. Um, it's very important to begin by identifying a solid strategy and identify your product or business, which will help you continue communicate effectively your visual communication later. So that visual stuff comes from developing a solid, solid strategy. All right, so we'll begin by looking at the um, ecosystem. So I'm going to share my screen again. And we begin by looking at the whole brand ecosystem as a whole. That includes visual, verbal, behavioral, sensorial, environmental, physical, digital, and converse, everything. Everything about your brand, everything that we discussed, right? That what a brand is about. So basically, when you're creating a brand, you want to think about it in all these terms, in a broad, broad view, big, big view. Understand your overall business and your strategy. It's, it's important to have a designer to be involved in those steps as well. If it's a startup, um, if it's a rebrand, they'll take you through that process as well. We want a multi-dimensional lens. So not just kind of super focused on something you already want, be open, be broad. Um, we usually do a set of customer interviews, in-depth conversations with, you, you know, um, if you're an entrepreneur, if you run the business, we'll have a conversation with you. Focus groups with target customers, um, ethnography, when you're following and observing a customer and their lifestyle, um, do our own research on the competitive landscape, of course, as well. So with Showbox, we started by looking um, on those different topics I mentioned, all of those things. So basically, as I mentioned, the goal was to really create a better, um, a new kind of customer experience and way to interact with a brand um, and just make events more fun um, and be able to have a fun experience um, that is mobile so that you can take anywhere. Um, so basically, from the brand expression that you have, all these different aspects about the brand will start to fill in with kind of different brands and how they use those elements in a good way. So if you notice, kind of the um, visual aspects, Coca-Cola is, you see a Coke, you know exactly what it is, right? You see those swirly lines, you know exactly what it is. Harley Davidson has a really distinct and purposefully unrefined engine. It's super loud. You know it's a Harley. You know what to expect. The Weather Channel. Straightforward. It is what it is. It, it, it's exactly what it needs to be. Contextual, localized information. So you really start to think about all these different aspects that make a brand and how they together will create a solid brand. So back to Showbox. We started to think about this assignment and how um, how might, might we help provide a platform for small businesses to become visible and be able to display and communicate their product and experience 
offering in a unique way where customers can directly experience it. So how do you start to think about what that would look like, attract a segment that is a bit more budget conscious, experimental, and looking for new experiences, you know? Um, and in that process, when you're building a brand, what are you doing? You're talking to an audience. You have like an audience that you want to sell to, your target market. When you're thinking about creating a brand with a strong emotional connection, we really like to think about what's the conflict from a consumer's perspective that we're trying to resolve. So always thinking about it from the consumer's um, point of view. Basically, an example is the way Aramex um, basically was the first delivery system um, in the UAE. Um, before that, it was pretty much impossible to order anything from overseas. So they came, solved a proper need, um, a so solid need, kind of created new different outposts where you could um, deliver things from overseas that would have a broad appeal to m multiple different customer bases. Um, so with Showbox, one of the biggest insights that we had was that it was too expensive and inaccessible to create kind of large scale events and have visibility for your small business. It was too expensive to, you know, there was too many different difficult logistical things without much control to really identify and portray your brand's personality. Um, so to create a fun experience, it just cost a lot of money. There weren't many options. So what we did is that we worked with the data that we collected from the research, right? The research phase, we work with the data that we collected um, from the research employees and start to build different directions. So instead of kind of going into it, like I said at the beginning, I like this logo, I wanna do this. We kind of figure out where the problem is, try to figure out what we're trying to communicate, create as many different directions as possible. So we're not pigeonholing, um, not just words, but we also build um, some of the exper experiential elements. Like what is this gonna you know, um, feel like? What would this smell like? What would this experience um, communicate? How would it feel you know, in context? Um, that those kinds of things. So with each one of those concepts, this is where we're getting here. What are those cues that you put around it that helps frame it broadly? What is your brand promise? What are you trying to communicate? What are, what is the statement that defines your values? What is your brand all about? Why do you do what you do? Um, what is your brand promising on behalf of the customer? It's something that you want everyone to believe in, your whole organization, everyone you work with and understand and act against. And it is supported by a set of core brand differentiators right here, the focus set of unique ways that your brand beats the com competition. It doesn't have to be, you know, better product. It could be a million different things. It could be, you know, better service. It could be a different kind of uh, targeting a different kind of pain point that maybe someone else has not thought about those kinds of things. Um, so basically from there, you basically want to create your messaging and your brand um, based on those differentiators and the personality and the purpose. You want to create elements of the experience that you can demonstrate are different that will differentiate you from other uh, brands. It could be around the idea um, of, you know, creating in terms of showbox, um, a more fun experience that is just, um, you know, more modular. Maybe it could be, you know, easier for, for brands to, to set up an event somewhere. Maybe it could be quicker. They don't need to plan all these different things. They have a template. We give them kind of like a, a ship template and they can take it from there. Um, those could be a few differentiators. And finally, your brand personality. So what is your tone? What is your vibe? If your brand was a person, what kind of person would it be? So asking those kind of questions that would humanize your brand. That's kind of the beginning points and different elements of building your brand personality, building your brand in terms of communication, experience, and employees all together will build your brand. Consistency is key. Consistency is key. So this is what we ended up doing with Showbox. All right. So we ended up going with the positioning statement for Showbox that said Showbox provides individuals, brands, and businesses with modular, transportable, 
temporary and semi-permanent affordable and innovative mobile platforms and event space in the terms of an event space. Um, it could be fit out with multiple template models that push the boundaries to engage brand users in fun, playful interactions that create lasting experiences. So basically in short, it was inexpensive, it was modular, and it's a mobile space, basically a truck that you can fold out in different ways depending on um, your brand, depending on the brand, you know, you, you could have a music box if you're a DJ um, or, you know, if you're a concert venue or if you are a um, TV screening, film screening kind of service. You can have an art box if you want to display art galleries. You can have a the sport box, if you are a fitness company or a sport company and you want to basically reach your customers in that way, and those basically could go on the road, you can take them anywhere, you could be at kind of big events like we have here in the UAE. Um, and that's kind of what we went with, the basically positioning statement and the idea. And um, basically it was just, it felt relevant to customers' daily lives. It was different than what was happening in the service category um, at the time. Um, and it just became affordable and accessible to, to brands. If you think about uh, big brands today, there's Apple, there's Samsung, there's Pepsi, there's Coca-Cola, there's Nike, there's Under Armour, Adidas. When I say those different names, even though they may have the, offer the same type of product, we get completely different impressions, right? We have, um, a different sense of personality to each of those organizations, what you expect in terms of the products, in terms of the design. Um, when you start to think about what those personality attributes can mean, they actually inform a whole new set of activities around um, the product. How, we, how do we write? What's our voice? How do we communicate? How do we present ourselves? So as you can see, there's a million different ways to approach it. So it's super important to really set your design strategy before you even start thinking about visuals um, or representing them. So basically this is kind of what I'm showing you on the screen right now is kind of how we, um, how I as a designer would basically approach um, a, a brand project <laughs> uh, and work with a startup. So thinking of the positioning statement, looking at maybe different ways um, of thinking about things, but also think about all the elements in the whole brand ecosystem as a whole, putting it all on kind of one page, making sure it all makes sense together. Next up, all right. Um, the first point of contact people have with your brand, once you create the brand strategy and everything is your name, right? That's the first thing people probably hear about when they're hearing about it from someone else, when you're talking about it. Um, so your name is kind of the first impression, super, super important. We all know that, right? So when you're thinking about creating a name, you want to think about what does that name start to feel like? What does it evoke in terms of the customer? What does it make people think about? Um, when we get to design, how do we begin to demonstrate it, the name, when we present ourselves visually? Those become important words that we spend time thinking about, put definition around so we can understand how to build meaning around them. In terms of service, um, what do you think about how that translates your brand message, your brand tone, your personality, and where we could leverage brand differentiators in terms of service? So basically something that people notice, your differentiator, right? Is thinking about how you can communicate things in a way that is inviting, welcoming, friendly, especially with Showbox, you have to be kind of um, friendly, inviting, fun, accessible because it's in the service industry. Um, and that's kind of the brand personality that we were going with. So you start to get at elements of how you write. It's not using complex phrases. It's just, you wanna start thinking about the tone and the messaging, straightforward, simple, inclusive, um, and a friendly tone of voice. So it's elements of it that inform starting to think about what does that mean for a name? Okay, so when you're thinking about the brand elements, all those different things will help you figure out your name. Is it, you know, edgy, hardcore, you're gonna have kind of a more edgy and hardcore name versus friendly and accessible, you're gonna go um, with something more in that tone. 
So name naming is super challenging, really, really difficult. Um, a lot of the times we think of hundreds of names, just write down anything that comes to mind. And because one name could kind of, you know, touch on different parts of the brand personality and another name could also touch on, that's totally different, could touch on other parts of the brand personality. So just really think about everything and then slowly narrowing it, narrowing it down to see what works best um, with a lot of testing as well. So no name is gonna be perfect and encompass the whole idea of a brand. Um, I try to think about the name kind of as an empty vessel. It's something empty that you will have to build meaning towards over time with consistency through the rest of your brand ecosystem. So with the benefit of having the brand strategy in place, like we were talking about, you can really begin to think of a name that portrays the brand story really well. All right. So naming criteria. So this is a big part of the brand. As I mentioned, is the first kind of, you know, um, touch point that your customers access. When you're thinking of naming options, some might be more purposeful and direct. Some might be more friendly and welcoming. Um, we use the personality attributes of the brand to develop a name, like a set of name criteria. Take them through a large search, look through Google, see if it's, you know, if anyone else has the same name, that might be obvious, but, you know, definitely look for domains if they're available you don't want something to be confusing or too similar to another brand even if it's somewhere else in the world you want something to be super easy super catchy um and also legally available that's very important is it trademarked um it should be something that you really can own fully own and build on yourselves um, and make sure it doesn't mean anything weird or strange in any other languages because that's also a big thing that you could maybe forget about um, is it usable around the world? But basically, some criteria. Um, you want something that's easy to remember, um, easy to type, easy to spell, unique enough so that it can stick with people and it's the first thing that comes to mind. People really usually um, can associate with and are um, more attracted to things that are relatable, that are familiar. So usually you find that made up names aren't necessarily um, the best all the time. Of course, it depends on the business, but a lot of the times people love relatable things. So there's different types of names. Real world names, compound names, storytelling names, acronyms, made up names. Um, and you never know where the options will come out. It could come from anywhere. So hundreds, hundreds of ideas, and then you can slowly start to think about it. Um, think of it in terms of functional criteria and image criteria as well. You want a name that would um, have all the must-haves. That's kind of what the functional criteria is. Let me move down here. You basically um, think about things like, is it legally available? Is it offensive in other languages? Um, it should be short, maybe a couple syllables. Is it simple, easy to identify, um, unique and represents your brand message or mission? Um, and when you think about the visual or image criteria, you want to really think about kind of how you are targeting that name and shifting it towards the brand personality. So how you're taking elements of your brand personality, if it's fun, if it's edgy, if it's, you know, something about performance, you want something active, dynamic, um, something very much grounded um, in terms of showbox. We went back to having visual criteria that was really fun, that um, represented the brand personality and brand elements. Um, so you really want to look like, look at how does a name talk about one or more of these attributes? How does it evoke some of the brand personality, um, things, different name ideas might do better or worse, um, on different dimensions. As I mentioned, people love what is familiar. Um, basically if I were to give you a descriptive name versus an invented name, most of the time, customers will pick the descriptive name. 
they already know what it means. They feel comfortable. They don't have to think about, you know, oh, I forgot what that word is. It's a bit hard to pronounce. Um, and the name will greatly affect how we think about the symbol, which is the logo when we start to think about visually, because they should align and not be at odds with each other. For example, um, you think about Apple. <laughs> if, you know, it, the logo, if it were a pear or an orange or some other uh, fruits, that would be a bit, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't fit, right? So you want something, it doesn't have to be that literal, but that really represents and um, kind of plays up on the name meaning as well. It doesn't have to be um, literal, like I mentioned, and it could be just an interesting way of also communicating the brand message or personality. Um, another thing is that quite often I find that clients have very emotional or subjective reactions to design. So when you go to the design part, um, you want to be able to kind of frame it in a broader strategic context so that we try not to be subjective about it because we all have our subjective preferences. But when you're thinking about design, you don't want to think, oh, my favorite color is purple. So my brand has to be purple, right? Because your brand doesn't always, unless it's like literally you, your brand is you, your brand is speaking to your customers about a specific message, a product, you, it doesn't necessarily have to reflect you and your preferences. Um, so try to comp, kind of think about it as um, a strategic broader view. So you want basically to create it, to make a confident decision of how you're gonna help your business um, because it really, really matters. Um, on to the logo. <laughs> I think there are questions. When you share your screen while keeping your video, we can only see the right half of your presentation. Oh, how do I turn off my video? Can you minimize Samia? Um, can you see it now? Perfect. I'm not sure how to hold on. Stop video? Should I just stop video? I can't even see generation. <laughs> I don't know where generation is coming from. Well, it still stays on the right side. Huh. Generation evaluation selection. What? Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm not sure why that's going on. Let me see. Stop video. Is it better now? Can you see everything? I just stopped my video. Maybe that should help. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, awesome. So next up, once you've set your visual criteria, um, the logo is one of the most difficult things to create. 100% really hard. Um, the expectations that this is going to be what the one thing that synthesizes all the work we've done, the research, everything so far, to the point in terms of the business we're trying to do. And now and in the future, it has to say every single thing we do, all the criticisms, Criticism will come to the logo, right? People expect it to be, to communicate everything about your brand. Firstly, it's not going to communicate everything about your brand. <laughs> it's not going to be your whole brand story. That comes back to the ecosystem, the whole brand ecosystem. So, but having said that, you want a strategy and a logo to last. It's not the type of thing that you want to change every five years. Um, you could evolve slightly. But the best leading brands, you can see the symbol, identify exactly what it belongs to, right? The swoosh, how genius is that? Um, the Nike swoosh, the Apple symbol, McDonald's, the golden, you know, arches. Um, 
to be able to build that recognition takes a long, long time. So you want to be able to have that come through. Um, again, back to, can you do something quick, something simple? Simple is very difficult to achieve. That's one thing that I often struggle with. Oh yeah, yeah, it's super quick. I just want something simple. <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of design and of your logo. Don't rush the process. If you want something to last, honestly, a logo will typically take, depending on the um, brand, but a logo, like to get a, something really good at least two months, I would say. Sometimes up to six months of like research, depending on how deep you want to go, give something about four months to really think through from, the, from strategy all the way to execution. Um, Again, your logo is your brand's name flag. It needs to be eye-catching while still conveying the tone of your company's philosophy. It's your flag. Take your time to craft it well. What it does not do is it does not tell your entire brand story. It does not, to be too, it does not need to be literal. I'm just going to stop sharing so that you can um, see me. It does not need to be too literal. <laughs> um, Again, it doesn't have to be an apple if, you're, if your brand is apple. It could convey different parts of your brand personality. Um, it does not need to tell your entire brand story. That comes down to all the, the rest of the ecosystem as well, your products, your experience, how you communicate to customers, your employees, everything. Um, so don't really think of a logo as, oh my God, but I can't, my clients don't, can't necessarily tell that you know, it's a fitness company. If you just saw the swoosh without anything else, you wouldn't necessarily know that it was about fitness, right? So it doesn't necessarily tell your whole story. Um, the more literal a logo is, I typically find, the less interesting it is. <laughs> um, so how do we begin? When we start thinking about the personality, the attributes, the qualities, how does that translate in a visual way? Now, this is the fun part where we start to... Um, you know, before we even start sketching, I would typically start to visualize some of the words of the brand personality that start to come up. We'll show examples of the vibe, images of what the customer, um, what type of customer, what colors that might be aligned to that personality trait, um, typefaces, materials that generally communicate the type of messages we want to communicate to set the criteria so that everyone's aligned, everyone kind of is like, okay, yes, this feels like what we're trying to communicate without having a logo first um, before jumping into what it looks like. So once all that is set, you get a general vibe, a feeling that everyone is um, agreed upon. Then we start to think of the typefaces, the colors, is there a symbol? So you really want to work with a designer that knows exactly what they're doing, how to think about those things, a word mark, you could have a word mark um, and an icon in a logo. A word mark is basically your word just written out in a unique way. So not just, you know, typed on the computer. It's written out. It could have a, uh, your unique font. Um, it could be hand lettered, um, whatever it is. But basically, it's the name of your company um, that you can own so that when people see that, they know it's you. The icon um, is your kind of the symbol the, the singular image or mark that represents your brand. These could be in one or they could be separate. Um, so yeah, once we start to think about those things, we'll create that mood board. Um, and then we will start sketching. Once everyone's on the same page, that's when we will begin sketching. So first, I'm just, I just have Be A Warrior on here that Jesse, um, quickly um, talked about as well. Uh, so basically, since um, I'm a designer, I designed all the, the branding for Be A Warrior. And basically before we start to even think about the get to the computer, I like to sketch everything. Black and white, you know, um, on pen and paper. At the very beginning, I, it's about finding out that a concept, that simple, idea. I usually get the best results when sketching in black and white. It's, and, and don't worry about too many details yet. Just kind of put everything out based on the brand personality, something strong, something empowering. It's all about women empowerment and learning new skills and overcoming obstacles. So just thinking about what would that mean in terms of shapes, 
visuals, um, and, and those types of things. So once we start to find some ideas that we think have some legs, are interesting, then we start to think about more details. Draw on the computer, what colors help to associate, what typefaces should we use, and how all these pieces work together. Um, next, with Showbox, for example, um, basically, once you have the logo, everything that you put together becomes your brand. Get a designer who can help you create something that is strategically sound, communicates the right idea, but also just looks good. Because sometimes um, you have something, an idea that basically communicates all the right things, but just does not resonate with customers. It just doesn't look good. <laughs> it just, you know, the, the colors don't work well together. The fonts doesn't really work. Maybe it's too, um, you know, kitschy depending on your brand, maybe you don't want that. So finding the right designer is key. Ask for previous work samples, check the work they've done before, ask, ask if you know any customers that they've worked with, ask them how the process went, or even just check how customers are reacting to the um, products or things that the designers have worked on in the past. I think, um, as I mentioned, the best logos have a very strong and simple idea. Um, with Showbox, for example, what we did, I'll get to that. Yes. What we did was that the logo, we wanted it to communicate the values of the experience. We wanted to highlight the creativity, the endless possibilities of the brand, how it's fun, how it's a truck that is modular. It opens in different ways. If you can see here, I'm not sure. Let me zoom in. <laughs> you can see that this is the icon that we went with, the orange on the, on the um, blue. And basically, it is basically the blueprint and the outline of um, the truck itself and how it folds open. So if you look up on the pink screen, it will show you how um, it, the truck is actually able to open in different ways. And that is literally all the different um, configurations that the truck can open with. So that we wanted to create and we actually animated it so that it shows up in a fun way. Um, and with that, we also um, wanted to create the, uh, sorry, communicate the multifunctional, flexible um, qualities of the space and the product. We wanted to bring in that element of surprise that we knew Showbox was about, and we wanted to communicate the quality in the identity. Um, so here, I want to share something else with you guys. Um, let me open it. Basically, the it's basically the um, the word mark that is. It's basically the word mark that is animated. So basically, this is the word mark that we created. Um, looking for it for you. All right. Okay, so um, here it is. So basically, this is the word mark that we created, right? This is the logo. Um, but it actually, because we wanted to communicate the fun, surprising elements of it and show how it's modular, um, we created an animation of it. So basically the logo starts with a, just a show and how it opens up, um, and it's super modular. It's, you know, fun. It's not just letters. It actually shows how things can expand and surprise just that little element of surprise, um, to show how the logo is animated and how that brand personality translates to the actual logo itself. So this is where kind of the stretchy type came from. Um, having open up kind of almost a box, like you're opening up the truck to kind of get all those different elements of surprise and um, being able to see the brand come to life. So back to here, All right. 
Now, back to the presentation. <laughs> Trying to fix it for you. All right. Okay, so um, I know it's not there anymore. Just one second. <laughs> If you guys have any questions yet, just feel free to um, ask, type it in the chat. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what Showbox was about. So as you can see so far, branding is not just your logo, it's so much more. It's the voice, it's the visual representation of your personality. Here, how everything comes together in Showbox. Um, it all works well together, right? It works as a system. If you saw one of them, you'd identify it as kind of working in the family of Showbox. Um, your brand is your voice. It's, it's kind of the way you, it smells, it sounds, it looks, it's the experience about it and it's how people remember you. Um, with Showbox, it's everything from the truck design to the way the referees greet you in the sport box. Um, which is like a fun game experience where you kind of get different um, mini uh, mini challenges in, in five different sports um, at an event, a signature soundtrack maybe that makes you feel excited that whenever you hear that sound, you know that's um, linked to a specific brand. Um, and the process of connecting parts of the strategy into the design process um, into different design directions is super important. Um, so again, once you create a logo, once you work with a designer and you're happy with something, you want to, um, get kind of gut reactions from people about your logo who are not involved in the project. Sometimes things that are completely obvious to us are not as obvious to others. So when you ask people, try not to ask them for, for their thoughts and ideas, try not to ask them, do you like it? Because people are subjective. They're going to have their own reasons for liking certain things, for not liking them. Um, like I mentioned, you know, they have preferences. Oh, I just don't like the color blue, you know? Um, so try not to say, hey, do you like it? Instead, you want to ask to get like a good answer reaction about your brand. You want to ask them, how does this make you feel? And get the different kind of descriptive words that, that comes to, to them. Um, you want to get, what do you understand or get from this? You want to ask them, what does this evoke when you see this logo, when you see this kind of mood board, what are you getting out of this? And if, when you land on a final direction, we want to be able to effectively communicate that with your employees, with anyone else involved with the organization. How do you do that through your brand guidelines? Very important document, which will help you translate everything you just did, all your brand strategy, your visuals, your communications into a succinct document with your typefaces, with your colors, with your images, types of images that should be used, what, to, what not to do with your logo, what you're allowed to do, that everyone who comes in contact with your product or that helps you do anything for your brand should get this document so that everyone, so to make sure consistency um, is there, you know, so everyone knows how to kind of work with your brand. So that's super important. The designer will know, um, what to do and how to do that. Um, everyone should just understand and believe in that strategy. That's how solid it should be. That's where the story comes in. Why, what is your brand about and why, why it's about what it is about, you know? Um, and once you're done visualizing your brand, you have a solid strategy, a great logo, you really want to think about communication and marketing, right? That's the whole kind of story, the whole um, experience from, from purpose to, to product. Um, consistency is key. This is the only way brands last is through consistency. Um, use your brand guidelines that we just discussed. Do not deviate from your brand message ever. Everything that you do should be around that brand message and that brand promise. Um, use consistency to tell that brand story in every avenue. Every communication means don't worry about repeating too much. Repetition is key. Consistency is key. 
um, stay updated with the latest ways to kind of communicate, market your product, try to go on every platform. The more visibility, the better. Um, partner with brands that have similar values and always stay true to your story, 100%. Um, so here's a recap with some tips of things that we discussed. I have a little bit, I think I'll be able to send this um, presentation with you guys anyway, um, so that you can see some of those things that we discussed, but here's a recap. So basically, branding 101. Let me turn off the video so you can see. Um, branding 101. So basically, we want to start with research. When you're starting with research, these are some things you want to ask yourself. What is the company currently able to provide their customers. And if it's a startup, if it doesn't exist yet, think of this as aspirational. What do you want to be able to provide to your customers? What are the customers' unstated needs and drivers of behavior? Um, how, how is your company represented in social media? What do your friends think of the company? What do people think of it? Your, your brand perception in the marketplace. So think, all of these things you wanna think about that will help you get to the brand strategy. Once you're ready to do the brand strategy, this is what you need to address. Articulate your brand story with purpose and authenticity. This is key. Um, creating a brand story is really where everything comes from. Keep it simple so everyone can understand and kind of associate themselves with it and relate to it. Not everyone will relate to it, but if it's simple enough and people understand it, they'll be able to find a way to um, want to relate to it maybe. Um, make it tangible so that you can get real innovation in the experience, something that's super solid, that's super clear, um, and incorporate emotional purpose to motivate and align everything, um, everyone in the company, even all the stakeholders to be able to deliver and basically tell you and, and champion your brand promise. And when you come to naming, there, here are some questions that will help guide you. What kind of name might your customers like, depending on what market you're in? What wouldn't they like and why? What kind of names do other competitors have and what themes do they use? That's not to copy them, but just to kind of see what's going on. Um, and what kind of elements that are related to your purpose could inspire a name? And remember to keep those things in mind to create a strong name. Be short enough for people to remember it easy to read, write, spell, and pronounce, be legally usable and appropriate in your customers' languages. So in a nutshell, this is kind of, you know, these are things to think about. And of course, going to the visual directions, which a designer will definitely help you with. Um, so these are kind of the, the types of things that I work on with clients. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you found it helpful. Um, this is how you can contact me. Um, that's my website, which I need to update with work samples, um, but you can contact me on there. Um, at Skalidis is my Instagram handle. And